moving from the spinal cord to the brain stem. And because we've moved into the brain, the brain stem is within the cranium, it's part of the brain, we, have, we are now encountering a very, very fundamental question, which is what is life? And, and you can say it as what is life, what is death? And the brain stem is really key uh, to this consideration. And I, I want to highlight two books that are really worth reading. They, they pretty much come at this from two different points of view. Defining Death by Lainey Ross and Robert Veach asks, how do we define death? Do we define it by when the heart stops? Do we define it by when the brain stops? And so on. We'll, we'll talk about that specifically in a moment. Whereas Joseph Finn's talks about what is life. He, he writes, the book is called Rights Come to Mind, and it is about the uh, fact that many people that appear to be brain dead or even um, on their way to brain dead or very compromised in their brain, uh, in fact, they are, they are in there. They're in there, but they're not um, able to uh, communicate their, their presence. So this is uh, a fundamental, of fundamental importance. It's going to be of fundamental importance to you in your life with patients, but also with yourself and with your family members. So I want to go over this uh, for, for a moment. Until the, into the 20th century, uh, about halfway through the 20th century, in fact, death, which is an, a, a unitary event, everyone has one death. Um, was defined by the cessation of cardiac function. Because uh, of some, some developments, such as the respirator, the iron lung, as it was originally called, and so on, we now have the possibility of replacing heart function. And in that, that brought about a, a term that made its appearance in the 20th century, which is called brain death. And brain death, as currently defined, is death of the forebrain and the brainstem. For many, the death of the forebrain is the important piece, and death of the brainstem is simply a supportive, uh, uh, a supportive part of, of life, but not, not the, the essence of life. And so there is a movement among some to define brain uh, death as death of essentially higher functions, functions of memory and, and uh, communication and thought and emotion. And this is essentially death of the telencephalon. Uh, this, this is not currently recognized. What is currently recognized are either cardiac death or brain death. And we will go in and talk about what those mean. Okay, so let's, let's talk about what the brain stem does, and then we'll find out how you become brain dead. So the, the, the brain stem has the hindbrain, which is the medulla, pons, and cerebellum, and the midbrain. And it goes from more uh, basic uh, functions to more and more sublime functions. Uh, not really getting to sublime, but getting more f fancier at least. At least, so in the medulla, for instance, the medulla is required for breathing. It's re it's it regulates gastrointestinal motility. Um, it is it, it is critical to maintaining equilibrium, maintaining one's postural balance. Whereas once you get into pons, you're starting to get into eye movements, in particular horizontal gaze, um, posture, and facial expressions. So the pons supports facial expressions. Now, in the cerebellum, you're getting into motor coordination um, and uh, of all types of, of movements, gait, speech, reaching and grasping, and so on. In the midbrain, we get a little bit fancier. We're now, we are, uh, now the midbrain is, is uh, responsible for vertical gaze. It's responsible for near vision, pupillary control, locomotion, so uh, the a, a, a command center that can produce locomotion, walking, is present in midbrain. 
and it's also critical to arousal. Okay, so these are getting fancy, and uh, the the requirement for brain death is that none of these functions is working. None of them. Not even these ones back here in the medulla. So critically, not breathing. Breathing cannot be working in order for a person to be called brain dead. It is important to understand the extraordinary circumstances under which a person can be faced with the decision as to whether there should be all uh, efforts made to keep somebody alive, to give them a chance to recover, or whether there should be um, a uh, allowing this this individual to 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 die. Now, when it, when there is an insult, when there is a tr a trauma to the brain, brain injury, and that can come from stroke, it can come from a um, a heart attack, it can come from trauma. Um, whatever the, the, the cause, now you have this unconscious person and you don't know tomorrow whether they're still going to be unconscious or whether they're going to get better. One, one recent example, and, and there are a myriad of examples of this, uh, was Tracy Morgan. So Tracy Morgan was uh, in, in a horrible car crash and was completely incapacitated. He was in a he was non-responsive. And on that first day, do you know that he's going to recover as he did, which is wonderful? Uh, you do not know. And so now consider a, a family member faced with the choice of, do we go ahead and we support uh, our loved one, who yesterday was absolutely fine, and today is completely unconscious with lots of supportive uh, tubes and, and um, uh, support from the hospital. It, this is a, you cannot even imagine the emotional whirlwind that this produces in an individual. And at, in this emotional maelstrom, what the person is faced with is making a very rational, is making a choice that is best based on very rational thought. Do you want to continue or not? And it is, I think, very understandable that, that families are very confused. They're very, um, there are many minds as to what to do. And so an example such as um, uh, Jahi McMath, this is an individual, she was, she's a teenager, and she went in for a, what should have been a routine surgery, and she lost consciousness and was, con was declared brain dead. But the but her her heart was working, so she was in in the um, old uh, framework. She was alive, but in in a different framework, she was dead. The family of Jahi understandably could not under could not appreciate this, could not accept this, still cannot uh, by by all reports, still cannot. Um, and it's important to remember that, that, that Jahi and others in these compromised um, states of consciousness may act as though they, there's somebody in there. They may withdraw to pain. They may even make facial expressions. They may suck. They may grasp. They, they can do all sorts of things that look really reminiscent of a, uh, a living with it person. And compared uh, combining that alluring, hopeful appearance with the incredible uh, tornado of emotion, it is very understandable that certain um, uh, family members have a very hard time uh, accepting that a person may not recover. Okay, so um, one movement uh, afoot right now is to consider uh, three possible choices of what death is and to allow people to choose which one. They get to choose one. That's their choice. And then once that is met, then the, the person um, 
is uh, uh, is declared dead. Um, is this is this the law of the land? No, the law of the land is that uh, uh, is either one of these. Um, okay, so which, which is a confusing uh, situation as as described um, incredibly uh, vividly in defining death. Okay, so now we're going to go on and we're going to go through the brainstem. First, we're going to look at an overview and then we're going to go through step by step.